If you're up to date with what's happening in the world of robotics, you would be well aware that in Japan, robots can soon become a part of families. If this can happen so soon, it is just a matter of time before which robots become active members of our armies too. Hello guys and welcome back to our channel. Japan has been a pioneer in the field of robotics and has now reached a stage where they have deemed it safe for robots to be an active member of families. In fact, Japan has been building robots since the 1970s and since then, they have come a long way. Speaking of these humanoid nurses, they have been taught to nurse and befriend patients, especially the elderly who are admitted to hospitals. Thus, these robots not only pose as companions to the patients, but can also aid them in emergency situations. Moreover, the robots that are being built hold the ability to lift heavy weights or loads, put out fires, and even indulge in performing physical therapy. Having these trails in the medical field is quite important, especially if they're placed in the army. It's also important to note that life in the army is quite a lonely one in which the people who work there sacrifice their lives and family to work for the country. As we speak, Japan has been working on creating quite a few female robots to please men while providing them companionship. Having these robots in the army would definitely help boost their performance in the long run and make them feel less lonely amidst all the stress that they go through on a daily basis. For quite a long span of time, robots were taught to perform only a limited number of activities. But now, as we delve more into the field of robotics, researchers and scientists are coming up with ways to integrate a large number of functions into one robot. This could mean that these robots would eventually reach a stage where they possess most of the abilities of a human being and that robots could one day be equal to a human too. The Japanese have embraced the concept of having robots as a part of the family as opposed to Westerners and this is probably due to their Judeo-Christian tradition, the Shinto religion which talks about providing a spirit or identity to inanimate objects. According to anthropologist Jennifer Robertson, Shinto, the native animalistic beliefs about life and death, holds that vital energies, deities, forces, or essences called kami are present in both organic and inorganic matter and in naturally occurring and manufactured entities alike. Whether in trees, animals, mountains, or robots, these kami forces can be mobilized. So according to what she said, all inanimate objects, may it be a computer or a doll, they all have a kami in them. According to Shintoists, the true essence of anything in this world is found through its design, and the same applies to robots too. Thus, it is pretty evident by this point that the Japanese have a lot of faith in robots and consider them to be a part of our society. It is probably the Japanese who will have these robots become a part of their army first as opposed to the other countries out there due to their faith in the robots and them having beliefs that resonate around them. On the other hand, we have Westerners who are still highly skeptical about how far they should go with these robots. Westerners believe that these robots can turn into killing machines and are still very suspicious about having them become a part of our society. It's also important to note that what we are and what we do is based on the history of our nation. For instance, after the destruction caused by World War II, rebuilding the nation was heavily aided by modern technology and robotics. But in Japan, post the war, robots were depicted as human-friendly beings and they became the savior of the people. That is how robots got heavily embedded in Japanese culture and thus for decades together the Japanese have instilled trust in these robots. Astro Boy was created in 1951 and it was at that time when Japan was recovering from the war's nuclear backlash. The main theme behind creating such a character was to showcase a robot that fights against evil and keeps the nation's citizens safe. Even back then, the Japanese were quite wide-minded about having robots protect themselves against evil. In fact, in one of Astro Boy's stories, he protected the Vietnamese against the US Air Force. He did so by traveling back in time to 1969 and stopping the bombing of Vietnamese villages. This spread a loud and clear message to the people that robots are not bad. In fact, they could be our salvation. Many Japanese roboticists have either pictures or figurines of Astro Boy in their offices, reminding them that a robot too can be a part of saving their nation. Japanese have thought of robots in a positive light and have now even decided to introduce Robopats. Paro, a robot that functions similarly to a therapy animal, is another Japanese invention that was invented in the early 1990s. It was invented by Japan's Intelligent System Research Institute. As of today, its price is around $5,000. Paro is programmed to sleep during the night and stay awake during the day just like humans do. Paro is quite a creation and has been deemed to help people who face loneliness, depression, and even anxiety. 
These are issues often faced by the people who work in the army, and hence a creation such as Paro being a part of the army would definitely help. Paro does not die or get sick and doesn't need to be fed or walked either. In 2009, Paro was certified as a neurological therapeutic device by the FDA. In order to seek this approval, it had to undergo a series of tests at nursing homes and care homes where Paro relieved depression in patients and also helped people through tough times by communicating and interacting with them. What roboticists have been doing for quite a few years is focusing on working on the coding part as opposed to the exterior. But now, if plans to integrate robots into the army are going to be implemented, working on the exterior is going to be quite vital. Human beings who work in the army are said to maintain a certain physique. Robots, too, would come with such rules and regulations so that the efficiency of the army is high. If these roboticists were to collaborate with other industries such as the spacecraft industry or the automobile industry, they would be able to generate robots that would have a robust exterior that's not only cost-effective but also one that stands out amongst the masses. When war can happen is inevitable, we live in quite unstable times and the chance of a war happening in the near future or in the distant future is something that we cannot predict. All we can do is prepare for the worst and be ready with ammunition to defend the nation. Moreover, robots are a fairly new concept to quite a lot of nations, and it'll take time for us to integrate and accept them into society. But if the need arises and the nation is facing a crisis, having robots be a part of the army seems like a smart move. What are your thoughts on robots joining the army? Do you think patriotism is something that can be instilled through programming in these robots? Based on the kind of developments that are taking place in the field of robotics, do you think this robot working for a particular army can go rogue due to a virus or bug placed in it by the enemy and go against its own nation? Bless the comment section with your thoughts. We hope you found this video quite informative and hope to see you back on our channel very soon. But before you go, do drop this video a like, click the subscribe button, and hit the bell icon to be in the loop on what's going on here. See you soon!